Hi, um, my name is Kimberly Giffen, um, and I am a adult builder from uh, Pierce County, so Tacoma, Washington area. Uh, and this is my greenhouse garden. Uh, I was inspired by another builder to build in a more of a dollhouse type scale. Uh, so I started out with the greenhouse, and then like it needs to be attached to a tea shop, and then I'm like, and then. Hey, I should have a koi pond, and hey, let's make the koi swim. So things get out of hand quickly. Just keep, just keep going. Um, but I also work as a STEM instructor um, in Tacoma, and so I work on a, a weekly basis with kids and introducing them to power functions and motors and gears and Lego Technic pieces and the more technical aspect. Um, so I was so excited to be able to figure out how to put that into. A model, and not just, um, and not just uh, do that on on the side at home, because <laughs> um, so, I teach summer camps and robotics and all sorts of fun things too. Uh, so you're able to incorporate that really nicely here into the build, so we can yes. d dive a little bit deeper into the koi pond, maybe then to start off with here and explain a little bit of that mechanism. So um, the mechanism is it has a battery and he battery in this section um, and a motor over in here somewhere and then it has a little worm gear to attach to um, the motor and the worm gear helps to slow the Lego motors down to get that slow speed um, and it also helps to change the direction so that all my gears are kind of going horizontally with the um, with the plates underneath them. And so the fish are then attached to um, the long translucent Lego rods. Um, and so you don't really see the rods that are under there moving the fish back and forth and around. Um, and then the other challenge was to figure out what to use for water um, because you couldn't just cover in tiles because no one would see the fish. Um, so uh, garage doors. Uh, was the solution to that, and it tied in nicely with the other tiles of the stream and stuff. Um, it came together so nicely, and it creates a great little kind of gentle swimming effect that looks fantastic. Uh, yes, and I really like how uh, subtle it is. Um, I've had so many people who have looked at the model and not even realized until like 10 seconds in, they're like, oh, and the fish are moving. Um, so yeah, it's probably was one of my nice little engineering challenges and, um, you know, excited to see that it's not only, uh, done well with that, but it's hasn't broken down. <laughs> Very important for Very anything important. with movement. <laughs> yes. So we can move on to the buildings themselves then. So tell us a little bit about more kind of what you have included in here and how the structures came together. Um, so the size of the greenhouse was actually dictated by how many windows do I own? Um, I kind of started out with the doors because the doors gave a good idea of the scale. Like if you have a door, then you kind of have an idea of how big the one. Here's something most people don't know. The doors, these ones actually open. Very nice. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I also had come across a lot of the bulk um, white fence filigree. And so this was kind of an element that I had seen in some other mocks that was really beautiful when done in quantity. Um, so I wanted to um, incorporate that in the design of the greenhouse and also carry it on to the edge of the border of the model itself. Um, so that was one of my, my favorite features is getting to use all of those little parts. Um, I also have a really love of a mosaics. And so um, one of the fun things for the greenhouse was designing the floor and incorporating a little design into that as well. Um, I actually went to uh, Watson's greenhouse in Pierce County uh, to look at like how did they do their big glass roofs? How did they have, did they have a beam structure? Um, what features did I find in a nursery garden store so that I could try and include as many of them as possible? How did they have their plant stands tiered? Um, so getting the inspiration from what I actually saw in the real world 
um, as well. Yeah. And it, and it looks really nice. I also love in the background there, is that like a baked goods cart there? Um, yeah, and I that was actually originally supposed to be kind of out front by the door by the tea house. And I just didn't have space for it. So it ended up being tucked into the greenhouse. Um, I came across getting some of those chocolate melty pieces for the cake. And I was like, I have to use this piece in something. Um, one of my favorite little details inside the greenhouse is actually the hummingbird feeder. And while it's only like 10 parts, um, they were the perfect parts to make an element that looks very lifelike um, in, in the greenhouse. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And then we can, we can keep moving down to the, uh, the tea room as well. So it's like you've incorporated some lights in there. Um, yeah, we actually have lights in the beam of the greenhouse, too. Um, it's, I'm actually kind of new to playing with light kits. Um, so I love stained glass. And so that was a, something I wanted to incorporate. But it doesn't actually show up unless you light it from behind. Um, I like doing a little bit of interior. But a lot of times when you have a model, like you only get a tiny glimpse of the interior. So the interior of the greenhouse is just the one room that you can kind of peek through to see that it's um, a tea house um, and it has some interior. Uh, it was a really fun um, technique to try and add as much texture as I did to the walls. Um, lots and lots of plates stacked on each other and any piece that had any sort of texture or, um, or just a little like indent in uh, was just throw it in there, see what it looks like. And uh, I also had gotten some um, of the newer shield tiles and I was so excited to get to use those um, for the window boxes um, to kind of give that little shingled look. Um, Actually, the hardest part for me to find on this greenhouse has been the one by two gray tiles that are on the roof. I didn't want to use just new tiles. I mean, I could have gone to Lego and ordered a bag full, and instead I dug through all the bulk bins at all the used stores to find hundreds of these little tiles to cover the roof up. Um, I also work in Tacoma, so you get to see a lot of little old cottagey houses and that's kind of the inspiration for um, things, you, you know, you would drive to work and notice things like, oh, the chimneys have flashing. I, I need to put flashing on my chimney, you know. And uh, yeah, and then I guess the very last part of the greenhouse that I built was um, the side. I actually, the side was too plain. So I did the ivy on the wall on the side. Um, and that's actually built into the wall itself, um, when you get all the little bulk Lego stems in September, you're like, man, I'm gonna redo the, <laughs> redo the uh, side and, and add more detail to it. And uh, it's just been such a joy to play around with um, parts that you often don't use for plants and parts that you, um, and just making the plants a little bit bigger than uh, your minifigure scale plants because the, you can use bigger plants and ah. yeah, right. I mean so much of this build just defines like nice parts usage as I look around here you've included so many different creative parts so one thing we haven't touched on much is kind of the broader landscaping throughout this particularly the ground level here so how did you create those like different sections that create the groundwork um so the groundwork around the pond is all kind of more your traditional brick built, uh, uh, you know, plates and different shaped plates and then layering some tiles on top of it. Um, but the cobblestone effect, um, I actually had my husband make me a frame. There's actually a wooden board underneath the, the base. Um, and then I covered that in road plates um, because they're this nice dark gray color. Um, and then it, it was just weeks and weeks of making rocks um, because I had the idea to put them in uh, sideways. And so the, the rocks are all kind of loose fit in there, which means you're not conforming to the typical 
grid-like pattern of Lego. It's kind of very organic. I wanted it to look like a cobblestone patio. And um, so different sizes and different shapes and uh, really being able to just, you know, have fun with it and have it look um, off the grid. <laughs> Yeah, a little more realistic, natural look to it. Um, I think that was kind of an idea with behind the whole thing was everything was, how can I make this look natural and how can I make this look beautiful and how can I give this texture um, were my main things with, with figuring out things. I love the way that you've kind of combined the, the natural elements with some of the man-made structures. So when we look at kind of the corner here behind the pond, what are some of the different build elements you have back there? Um, so I have, um, well, the stone bench, um, and I really like that I didn't use texture on the stone bench um, because it, it was more about getting the shape down on that element. Um, the trellises, and originally there were three, and um, I opted to remove them because remove the third because it was just a little too busy. Um, and I had bought a I had um, built a delightful little squirrel tree, and I needed to kind of a space for that. Um, uh, every every gardener's cottage garden has one of these little fake wishing wells, and so that was one of the elements that I had to have. Um, and it was fun because kind of using the diff some different techniques to get that little stacked lumber type look. Um, but yeah, it was so much fun to. Uh, Add, add some things that, you know, if you made a mini scale, you, you would not be able to make a big trellis with that much detail to it. And uh, yeah, the yeah. scale you work at here kind of allows you to do some, some cool stuff like that. Uh, it really does. I mean, it allows you just to, um, you know, the pagoda, the pagoda even by the, the pond is, is something that is more of a, you know, if, it would be like a micro scale pagoda, um, but it wouldn't necessarily be a mini figure scale pagoda. So uh, it made it definitely look like a nice garden element. Um, one of my favorite elements. Yeah. Well, the whole build is fantastic here. So I love to see how much color and all the different parts you've used here. Do you have any plans to kind of expand on this type of idea with more the greenhouse and the tea room or go in other directions in the future? I really don't know. I kind of build whatever, and I always like to build things um, that challenge me. Uh, I actually could build castle all day long, and I would be happy with that. Um, and I could build houses. Um, I love doing architectural replicas, and so I kind of have a few buildings in mind as far as maybe I want to do uh, do this building or something. Um, I yes, so I kind of am a little all over the place as far as I really like landscapes. I really like doing waterfalls. That's one of my favorite things to build is uh, waterfalls, and you can try out so many different techniques for water, um, and they really tend to look good and make your build pop. So, yeah. Sure, whatever it is, it will be very impressive. So thanks for all your work here on this layout, and thanks for bringing it out to BrickCon. I appreciate it. Uh, you're so welcome, and uh, thanks for sharing this.